Welcome back to Producers Toolbox. I'm your host, Carol Adrian. Filmmaking incorporates so many of the creative arts. It's exciting, seductive, magical. Some people begin to make small films before they're even 10 years old. Some people studied the art of filmmaking through university and graduate schools, developing multi-level perspectives and skills. And some people, upon their retirement, take a hard right turn from their longtime careers and jump into filmmaking by developing or polishing a variety of their existing skills. Today, we're going to talk about how to successfully embrace filmmaking, whether you're in the fourth grade or whether you are retired. I want to introduce you to my friend Shannon Leahy Miller, an award-winning documentary filmmaker with two films under her belt and a mini-series in production. When Shannon retired from her career as a requirements analyst for the insurance industry just three years ago, Shannon took that hard right turn. Welcome to Producers Toolbox, Shannon. It's nice to see you in the studio. It's nice to see you as well. <laughs> now, your first film, I want to I want to just show people the awesomeness of your first two projects. So the first one, can you just give us a short description of 20 Hearts? So 20 Hearts is a documentary uh, that focuses on the Philadelphia International Dragon Boat uh, Festival. That festival usually has about 114 teams, all with 20 people on each team. And I found through my first time I participated in that event that there were a variety of reasons why people participated. So I wanted to make a little story, a short little documentary of six distinct reasons why people were there with 24,000 people that were spectators, what made them come year to year, do all the training and do all the hard work. It's pretty amazing to think that many teams and that many people coming together for that event. But your next film, which you did with producer Doug Chrisman, was a completely different kind of a story, Escape from Tyranny. Can you just give us a little clue of what's that about? We're right. going to come back. So I met Doug when I was doing 20 Hearts, and he very graciously volunteered to be my um, editor for 20 Hearts. And he had a project that he'd been working on for four years. He had been developing his this story of his wife's family, five families all together intersected with these two brothers. And it was about their um, continual uprisings in Lithuania, where there were constant political uprisings. And this family, how they all, through by luck and by family events and through connections, escaped ever being it killed basically and how they by just in a minute's notice got away and all emigrated to the united states or majority emigrated so it was really fascinating he had all sorts of you know um film and photographs and all kinds of interviews and some very good fo footage from that time news real footage that incorporated this family's struggle and how they got to here to the United States. And this is really archival footage? This is from, from what period of time? This would be the First World War to the Second World War is how, wow. how this family story spans. Wow. So let's go back and talk about how you made that hard right turn from the insurance industry. What was your job uh, it, uh, most recently before you retired? So right before I retired, I was a, a requirements analyst. So my job was to get information from the product side of the house to the IT side of the house, an insurance company. I've been in insurance for like 40 years for different different pieces of the puzzle that goes through that whole type of business. And this is my last piece was there. And during that time is when I participated in the International Dragon Boat Festival. And that's, so I took the skills from that once I had the idea to make this story. So you were always interested in film and you, you majored in communications, but you had not previously made a documentary, had you? No, I I actually, I majored in communications and a speech and theater and, and you know, a lot of 
time that was new that everything was new back then you know there wasn't it wasn't as easy as it is now and it wasn't as easy to get go in and have film classes there were pieces of it but um and it wasn't the market wasn't really open and those small spots were very competitive so you know i had to earn a living like everybody does so i got into the insurance uh business by default and then thought it would be a great idea to start a little hobby or go back and get some education about what to do in the modern world in between i did go back a couple times and take some film classes and take some camera classes but you know technology has changed rapidly so they were really not applicable anymore no so three years ago when you decided to take the dragon boat film seriously uh you went to a public access cable station in Philadelphia, Philly Cam, which had courses. Tell me a little bit about how you found your way back into that, which included the technical end of filmmaking. Well, during the Dragon Inter International Dragon Book Festival, uh, I met a young man who worked in the mural arts program. And that man introduced me to somebody who was a local uh, documentarian. So I reached out to him and said, this is what I think I'd like to do. I have a story I'd like to do. And he said, well, you know what? Find another way to just dabble first. See if you like it. Find an inexpensive way to get some more education. He pointed me in their direction and said, you know, they're small classes. They have a lot to offer. It doesn't cost very much money. And try that first and see what you, what you think. So I took the first class I took was production and found out I really had a lot of skills that I was using anyway to get a pitch together, to get my basic storyline together, to go out and try and get people's support using like PowerPoints and little clips and snippets and, and how to go out and ask people to work for me. You had mentioned to me that one thing that struck you was once you got into the filmmaking that it brought so many skills you had acquired throughout your career with insurance and throughout your personal life and it, it brought all those into play which was something that appealed to me. I thought, oh gosh, it incorporates all these things that I am interested in or I love anyway. Is that what you found? Oh sure, I mean it's like Anytime you work in a, in a business and you're trying to sell somebody your idea, I mean, that's all about what I was doing, what I wanted to do now, what I'd done in the past. So you could do a PowerPoint to explain what you want. You already have this skill. You had an idea. You could develop your thought process, your, your budget, how much it would take, how many people you needed, your time that you needed to put in it. Those are skills if you've been in business that you, you can use because doing a documentary the easiest part is shooting the documentary the hardest part is getting the thoughts together to get it in order to sell somebody on your idea to get people to go along and then decide who's actually going to see it so those skills if you've been in a working environment you get as you go along you do and then you realize you're actually more competent than you thought i think sometimes well, it's yeah. you were more, or more prepared but you really went out of your way to acquire uh, and enhance the skills that you already had so didn't you uh, so you worked with script software and you you took classes online as well as being involved right in the public access cable station is that so the pandemic changed the, the course of the educational process for me. I really only had one course under my belt. I had my idea. I had my pitch from that class. And then when the pandemic came, I no longer had a traditional crew. But right before the pandemic happened, we had a, a pitch session. And I had a gentleman who was going to be a cameraman. And he brought along as editor. One was Joe Kame as my cameraman. And my editor was Doug, who you've already mentioned. And they were like, yeah, we're going to help you. And I was like, I still need to make sure that equipment is there, things are there, pandemic happens, we decide we have to use something new and we've used it for both of them. We were the first affiliate cam to finish it and the name of that was StreamYard. So we no longer needed official camera people. StreamYard acts like Zoom, more sophisticated, more things you can drop in and use. So our next thing was to find out how we were gonna collaborate to write 
the whole story or to fix the whole story. Mine was already written, but to move to Doug's, we had, we had a lot of information. We had four years of information to get down to, first we went to two hours, then we decided we needed to go to an hour. Two hours was, was very cumbersome. So we had a, for want of a better word, it's an application, Celtic, Celtics is the application. And we use that to script, to do our script, to fix our script, because we can collaborate the two of us together. So we would sit every night and work together, fixing the script, placing our, our information, moving our shots. We did shot screen, uh, shot, um, script basically mm -hmm. for both of these projects so we did stuff like that and then doug is a master of the editing and he used his applications for the editing so yeah there's a it shifted quick and and it's really made it a lot easier to work especially if you're not together Yes, and, and he's working from a distance now. We're actually going to have right. Doug on right. uh, in a future episode to mm -hmm. talk about that. But it, it interested me that you kind of, now, had you seen yourself as a screenwriter prior to that, or was that something that kind of just was a comfortable place and, and, and you worked on that aspect of it? Well, I never saw myself going past the first documentary. And in that one, I did everything. I wrote it, I directed it. I did everything but shoot the camera, which is inside the stream yard and, and the edit piece. But I did everything else. So when Doug asked me to move over to help him with Escape from Tyranny, um, the script writing was, he already really had a story. It just really needed to be massaged. It needed to have a little bit more focus. It needed to have, you know, we, we needed a place for it to go. So I just sort of naturally just found that role because he was very comfortable with everything else. Um, he has a lot of skills. So that's how it happened. That's one of the things that I love about filmmaking is you get to work with people with different sets of skills and and the excellence level of people in film and TV in my experience is really profoundly wonderful and so working with people who are really good at what they do is that's it gives you a confidence it, as you go along for the, for the parts that, that you are not capable of. Like, I'm, I'm a terrible tech, but I, I can envision, I know the parameters that, mm -hmm. that the equipment can do, even though you don't want me handling anything, but I can. So it's easy for me to, to relate to the actual, to the camera person, to the sound mm -hmm. technicians. So, um, but you you really had some all around skills that that are working well for you. <laughs> well, it's funny because when you work, when you start to work with people, you find that you have a natural. It doesn't take very long to find your natural space. It really doesn't. It, as a matter of fact, I mean, we had it figured out before the first one was done. Where my where my lane was. Did you? So Doug's strong point is the accumulation of information. My strong point is to cut through it <laughs> and find the pieces that will get somebody to look and listen. You know, that kind of, for some people, that's really the most painful part because you've got to take it down to half an hour. Or you've got to, you've got to let go of things. Oh, we both got brutal with that. Oh, really? He would mind me with his, you know, he, we would be like, no, that's going. I know you love it, but it's not staying. That's out. That's out. <laughs> it's not, I mean, you're not always real sweet to each other there's some hard decisions you have to make and you just you just have to plow through them you know it's not always a fun day because you have to make some choices you know and like anything else when you have a project you it becomes your baby so yeah. to take things away from your baby makes it a little is a little hard <laughs> it does i always enjoy though because uh, i love the collaboration where other people, you have an idea and it's great and you really can't wait to roll with it. And then somebody says, what if we put this sound 
under the helicopter rotors. And you're like, oh my God, that just elevated the entire thing. So to me, I, I never saw myself as a team player until I got into this field. Now I was like, oh, I love this because you were, you're a recipient of other wonderful ideas and, and people's skills. And I, I like that all coming together thing. Did you have more fun? I mean, you did the first one yourself, really, but did you have more fun with it when you weren't fighting with Doug? <laughs> well, I didn't say we were fighting. I mean, you know, you have to have that discussion, but the, going back to everybody has their strong point and you find your lane and that's the lane you have to respect as you go through the process if you because the idea if you invite someone in they're in they're in you yeah. know that's it's they're no longer an innocent, an innocent bystander oh you know i mean that's just it, it becomes it's natural it's not it's not a it's not forced it's not a competitive thing it's it becomes natural what pieces you like to do and what pieces you're better at. he is a whiz at technology i am not but i'm really good with I'm really good with being concise, you know, as a, mm. as a person, I'll talk for hours, but as a, in that particular space, I'm like, no, it's extraneous. It's not important. It doesn't oh. work. Well, it yeah. must have worked really well because Doug invited you in on another, it's a mini series about Tanzania. Right. Can you tell us a little about that one? Well, this is very much in development still. Uh, once again, he had had experiences there. He fell in love with Tanzania. He fell in love with uh, predominantly uh, the people that were showing him Tanzania. They were shifting their view from regular being with tourists, to educating him and his and his friends, it's a it's a very good story about a man's journey to love it and to share it with other people, and that's the beginning of it. There's there's more to the story, but um, lots of information, lots of footage, beautiful animal footage. But you know, there's more to it there. There's conservation issues. There's Important. you know, there's just the knowledge passed from generation to generation from this original guy to people that become his proteges and they're not natural from the area or the original man isn't. So he sees Tanzania through the eyes of a newcomer and falls in love with it. And, and that's a big part of the story. Now, how do you familiarize yourself when there are so many different, um, there's footage, there are fo still photographs, there are journals. How do you, how do you really gain your familiarity with the story? Well, I, to be honest for this one, because we were decided to work on the focus together to get the byline together, which is just your encapsulation of what your story is going to be. We changed it several times through looking at the footage and saying, you know what? No, that's not the story. This is really the story. And that same thing happened with 20 Hearts. I changed the focus of those stories like two or three times because really when you start artistically looking at something and trying to make it into a piece, you realize that it's something different than what you originally saw. Especially a documentary is very hard. That's the form we use. It's not personal. No, and yeah. I have found the story tends to tell itself to you. You really have to be open to listening. To right. Well, that's the point when yeah. you look at, especially like with tyranny, you listen to interviews, you look at journals, you hear things. It's like, mm, that's not really the story. This is what these people were saying. And at 20 Hearts, I sort of went one way and I went, nope. No, focus is over here. Look at all this footage. Look at this B-roll we were going to use. Look at the music that's playing in the background that we didn't choose. This is, this is the heart now. So that's the point. If you go into a documentary, it can't be your story. It has to be the people who are in it. It has to be the truth. So it can't be yours. It's, that's the hard part. It can't be your opinion. No, and it can't be your truth. It is the truth of that particular story whether it's sometimes it's an ugly truth but you you're telling the honest aspects right. of it right and you have to go in with like with Tanzania we're looking where we're looking at quite a few things there was another idea that we were we were going to use that was going to be part of it. it would be three parts and then we we were like I was like well there's another side to this and we don't know the other side so 
there's a possibility that should be left out because you have to, you can't just show one, one view of something. It has to be the other. The reason why in, in um, 20 Hearts there's six different people that are interviewed, each one was different. Each one had a different story. Each one, if I had interviewed them all with one central theme, besides why are you here, it, it wouldn't be a documentary. It would be me like making friends with people. That's <laughs> really not the point. Were the fin it, with um, Escape from Tyranny and 20 Hearts, the finished films, were they, um, was it A, a fulfilling experience to get it to that point, and B, are you happy with that final story that came up on the screen? It was agony to do <laughs> to do uh, Escape from Tyranny. It was difficult. It was hard because there was so much information and there were so many things that, like, we specifically decided not to handle some things that you would normally see in a, a documentary that talked about, you know, the Second World War and the atrocities and the things that happened. Like, we decided we were just going to focus on the Lithuanian people and we talk about some of the horrible horrors of war and exterminations with Jews, but we don't focus on it because our story was really about survival. It wasn't about death and war. It was about survival. And so it, it's hard because that's what you go in with. A, even when you make it or you view it, you go in with preconceived ideas of what belongs there until you, you know, keep looking and you say, you know, so we, we took a lot of time. It took us a lot of time to sweep through things and, and try and find the exact piece that we want. I think we're very happy with it at the end. Cool. Yeah. So uh, do you have other ideas cooking on the back burner? Well, we have the Tanz Tanzania thing that we, we still, it's way, way in development. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we've got the pieces, but we haven't put it together yet but we went back and actually took some courses and did some online stuff and during the pandemic some Sundance and a few people gave some free stuff out so people would create we're taking that information and that knowledge to try to develop you know this story so we're trying to make each one a little bit more professional and a little bit more you know um, long lasting in its appeal you know so that's that's really the, the whole idea and, you know, we're just going to keep going with the knowledge part and think each thing will get a little bit better. And I have something that's way in the back burner, but I'm still churning it. <laughs> I'm churning it, and I've been churning it for, the, for two years. And each time I go to something or look through information or I'm doing something about public art, I find more and more stuff that I'm like, oh, throw that in there. Yeah, I've got a whole big bucket, but I just don't have, I just don't have the, the true picture yet. I think you're seeking out courses and software and there's so much stuff available online now that you really, it's possible to really educate yourself in, in whatever aspect of it you, you need mm -hmm. that particular education. So um, would you recommend that approach? Well, well, you know, I'll be honest, if the pandemic hadn't happened, I'm not too sure we all, would have all been forced to do so much. Yeah. But I think that just like using applications like StreamYard and stuff, they're, they're making it so people can learn it. So it's not so hard. I mean, there is some expertise. I don't really have as good as a command as Doug does. Doug actually teaches it. He's, he's fascinated by the tech part of it. Um, I am too. I just... I started doing all this still working. So like I decided to take a little advantage of being retired and not deep as he is in it, but he loves it. That's his, he, and he's very good at it, but I'm learning it. I'm learning it and, and I'm in, I enjoy it. I mean, I don't have a problem not liking it. It's just that it's really natural for him. And he's been at it much longer than I have. He used to have a show on public television a travel show so he and he produced it and he did all the filming and so he's 
you know, he's, he's very comfortable with it. And, and you met him through that public access cable station, Philly Cam. Right, that's that, what I said when yeah. I was doing my pitch. Yeah. Uh, I had noticed, and we were talking about this recently, that an awful lot of older people are really finding their feet in, in the film and television industry through the public access cable stations. Now when people have more time to explore and to learn and, mm -hmm. and to make that vision real. So I, I always think whether you you want to do um, your family history or whether you want to cover a major political issue or historical period that what's available to us today is is remarkable array of of depth mm -hmm. in in that learning situation right would, uh, are you going to um, well, have you run into that that there's uh, there's an age opening kind of now in well I think I mean I, I experienced it Philly Kim I experienced it through the gentleman who told me how to get there um, he is older than me and he's been creating and he says his work is the best it's ever been since he's gotten older um, if I look at Philly Cam, I never was there like for the whole course of who was producing, but my experience was most of the people that I met that were producing were involved were not right out of school. They were people who'd had careers, who'd done things. Some of them are older than me, younger by not much, some of them too. But I think what's happened is you no longer have a society where older people just fade away. They find things, they want a voice. They were always people that they worked really hard. Now they have something to actually share and to say. And they and they, it's important stuff. You know, it there's is. one woman that does a thing on, you know, how to save money, how to make money, how to do things, some, you know, address social issues because they've been involved in these things. So I think that you're finding that people are also finding that the way to do it is more accessible. It's not as far and it's not as, you know, pushed back. Like, you know, when I got out of college, only a select people had access to cameras and film studios and stuff. Now you can pretty much do anything. It's not as difficult to do. No, now that we all have smartphones. Right. Kids, People do movies on, on oh, their phones. Yes, they do. And yeah. then they download free software mm -hmm. from the internet and, and do their own editing on right. their phones. It's really, it's a wide open field. That's really inspirational, Shannon. I, I love to think about how, you know, opening the next chapter or trying something Something new, and and you and Doug have actually won two awards now for for we Twenty did. Hearts and did. Escape from Tyranny, which is pretty fun. <laughs> that is pretty fun. We put our uh, we submitted to a film festival called Docs Without Borders, and we both put them in the same human spirit category. So it was pretty funny. So if one won, we both won anyway. So this was great because we doubled, and uh, it was really nice for us. Well, we are looking forward to watching you continue to win. And hopefully everybody home, take that chance. Pull out that smartphone. Polish that idea. And you can make a film too. Please join us next time on Producers Toolbox.